on the scene on the story news nine starts now Welcome and thanks for joining us this afternoon for News 9 at Noon. I'm Chris Gilmore. With me here is meteorologist Justin Rudsell. And Justin, I hear it's about to get pretty cold. Yeah, it's starting to cool down right now. And I did find something really cold. I found snow. Actually, Marty Logan found snow out there to the west in the Oklahoma Panhandle. One of these details in your weekend forecast here coming up. Thank you, Justin. You at noon, Payne County officials say one armed robbery suspect has been arrested. Another still at large. The manager of Yale Drug says Rodney Foz and two other people stole some prescriptions from the pharmacy. Foz has since been arrested, but police are still looking for the getaway driver. Call the Yale Police Department if you have any information. And a new Naval officer recruiting station has opened in the metro. It's located in Automobile Alley and it's replacing the old recruitment center on Meridian. Naval officers say this new location is ideal for the current recruiting incentives to support a 355 ship naval fleet. At the officer recruiting station here, we are looking for uh, college graduates with a minimum of a bachelor's degree and also medical professionals uh, to um, to serve in uh, the capacity that they're trained in, whether it be doctors, dentists, nurses, and also anyone who wants to um, serve. We have programs from anything from a pilot to um, intelligence officer to nuclear power engineers. Four recruiters will operate out of the office and carry out naval officer recruitment for the entire state. Front seat, step out, hands up! Walk backwards, short feet! Well, newly released body cam footage you're looking at shows the end of a high speed chase last week in Oklahoma City. Jim Gardner and Bob Mills Sky News 9 were over the chase as speeds reached over 100 miles an hour. Officers say the chase covered nearly 20 miles before Moses Perez, Jorge Sanchez and Jose Escalera gave up on I-40 near Banner Road. After the arrest, police found two loaded guns in the car. All three were booked into the Oklahoma County Jail. And Oklahoma City police are hoping someone will recognize these men wanted in connection to a drive by shooting downtown earlier this month. Officers say 26 year old Mark Finley was shot near Sheridan and Mickey Mantle after getting into a fight. Despite interviewing several witnesses and the victim, no arrests have been made. If you know who they are, call Crime Stoppers. But just because you do something wrong don't doesn't mean that you they have to treat you like that. A former Oklahoma County inmate says the jail didn't do enough to save her cellmate's life. Cindy Spray died from a perforated ulcer on December 16th. Her Kim, cellmate Kim Darling says a nurse gave Spray medicine after the 24 year old said her stomach hurt. But later, Darling woke up to Spray lying unresponsive on the floor. So I felt for a pulse. There was no pulse. So I started freaking out. And I started banging on the door. Nobody came. For 30 minutes, I banged on that door and no one ever came. Darling says the jail should have taken spray to the hospital earlier. We reached out to the sheriff's office yesterday, but no one was available for comment. And a person is dead after setting themselves on fire, trying to steal natural gas from a southwest Oklahoma City home. Oklahoma City fire officials say four people were using a garden hose to transport gas from one home to another near southwest 27th and Robinson. That caused a flash fire. And she's keeping screaming and screaming. Uh, there's another guy. She's just raising her hands too and screaming. I guess I don't know if they're asking for help. Officials say the other three suffered serious burns. And in less than three weeks, Oklahoma will officially have a new governor. News 9's Clayton Cummins has the newly released details about Inauguration Day. A whole week of events have been seen on the story here at the state capitol. Clayton Cummins, News 9. Lots of good information there. Thank you, Clayton. Well, President Trump and First Lady Melania Trump took their first visit to an active combat zone. They met with troops stationed at the Al-Assad Air Base in Iraq. During the surprise visit, the commander in chief defended his decision to pull troops from Syria, saying he will maintain U.S. presence in Iraq to deter ISIS. If they want us to do the fighting, they also have to pay a price. And sometimes that's also a monetary price. So we're not the suckers of the world. We're no longer the suckers, folks. Now that he is back in the White House, the president says he's focusing on the ongoing government shutdown. While in Iraq, he indicated that he wouldn't back down until he got the funding he needed for a border. How long do you think the shutdown will last, Mr. President? Uh, whatever it takes. I mean, we're going to have a wall. We're going to have safety. This morning, he tweeted, quote, Do the Dems realize that most of the people not getting paid are Democrats? 
The House and Senate are back in session today, but many members are still on vacation. They say they'll only come back if they're needed for a vote. That's not expected to happen until the president and Democrats reach a deal. Since the shutdown began, about 420,000 people have been working without pay. Another 380,000 have been furloughed. Well, still ahead, the numbers have been crunched and reports say holiday spending was at its highest since 2012. But first, we might start seeing some progress in the U.S.-China trade war. Plus, retailers are going to start phasing out products that contain a deadly chemical. We'll tell you about it after this. Welcome back. Time for some consumer news. There might be some progress being made in the trade war between the U.S. and China. China's Commerce Ministry says officials from the country's plan to meet face to face next month. Bloomberg is reporting that a U.S. trade team will travel to China the week of January 7th. And a new report from the MasterCard Spending Pulse report shows holiday sales have gone up over 5 percent. That means People spent more than $850 billion this holiday season. It's the largest amount since 2012. Now, the report tracked holiday shopping from November 1st all the way to Christmas Eve. And some of America's largest retailers plan to stop selling paint strippers that contain the deadly chemical methylene chloride. Major chains like Lowe's, Home Depot, and Walmart say they'll start phasing out products that contain the chemical at the end of this year. The Environmental Protection Agency proposed banning the chemical in 2017 but have yet to take any action, despite reports from scientists who say they've made an alternative that's safer and works just as well. A much drier day here across the state, as yesterday was not only a daily record rainfall, but the second heaviest rainy day in December. So 2.72, that's a lot of rain here in December. A quieter and drier nine-day period, and we'll talk about if we see any snow in the near future here coming up. Yep, yep, yep. Plus, ODOT is planning on expanding a project designed to help emergency responders. Stay with us. On the scene, on the story, this is News 9. Well, the state says its new license plate scanning system has already found more than 2,000 uninsured drivers. That since it started November 1st. The mobile cameras can identify those drivers by matching their license plate with a database of insured drivers. Now, drivers who can't prove that they have insurance are fined $174 and will have to get insurance for the next two years or face criminal charges. Oklahoma's Department of Transportation is planning to expand its safety initiative to help emergency responders. Earlier this year, ODOT installed 13 half mile markers along I-35 in Cleveland, McLean and Garvin County. Crews plan to install more markers this year. Officials do say this will make it easier for paramedics and police to find car people who need help. We're told they plan to add more centerline rumble strips and cable barriers as well. So that's good news all around, right, Justin? Now, you know, sometimes in Oklahoma when it rains, it pours. I think yesterday was that day. Oh, yeah, it rained heavy here across the state. A, a pretty big wet system for the month of December. December is one of our driest months, and we had record rainfall yesterday's record smashing rain. Uh, 1.60 was our daily Just record. struggling to hit the middle to upper 30s. So we're seeing the colder air, Chris but we just don't see the moisture with it to produce that snow that everybody's jealous that Marty's seeing right now. It's a good day for sledding, that's for sure, but now in the city, sweater weather at least. Yeah, at least sweater weather. Yeah, I got a bunch of other Gleatly sweaters in the closet. So coming up, the county's healthiest states have ranked themselves and find out where Oklahoma landed. But first, your favorite doctors in the house answering your medical questions. Stay with us. Welcome back in today's daily dose of viewer heard soy products cause health heart problems. They want to know if that's true. We have Dr. Lacey Anderson answering this then. In general, soy seems to be very healthy. Stay healthy and good luck. If you have a question for Dr. Lacey Anderson, call the hotline at 841-9999 or email dailydose at news9.net. And people who suffer from depression are at greater risk of having atrial fibrillation or an irregular heartbeat. That can cause strokes and premature death. Now, that's according to a study published in the European Journal of Preventative Cardiology. Researchers also looked at whether using antidepressants increased the risk of irregular heartbeat, but they found no link. New research finds heart attacks reoccur more frequently in young patients who smoke or have high blood pressure. Doctors say those risk factors should be addressed when treating young heart attack patients. 
and a new report ranks the healthiest and least healthiest states. This is from the United Health Foundation. Hawaii has reclaimed the title of the healthiest state in 2018. The foundation says the state has lower than average rates of obesity, smoking and frequent mental distress, followed by Massachusetts, Connecticut and Vermont. Oklahoma, on the other hand, didn't rank too well. Our state ranked 47 in the least healthiest state. Behind us is Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana took last place. Taking a live look outside from our Air Comfort Skycam Network. Those gray clouds circling around. Justin has a look at the nine-day forecast coming up. So check this one out. A Metro father created a new app designed to help people with dyslexia. Pierre Leibenberg of Oklahoma City created the app Lexico for his son. He says he only used resources from the Metropolitan Library System. And since using the app, his son's reading scores have almost doubled. He's hoping it can help others with dyslexia. It's empowering, uh, especially knowing that, you know, if there's a problem and you need to solve it and there's you know, nothing else around, then, you know, you can, you can do it yourself. The app is available for the iPad right now, but next year it's coming to iPhones. And a Cold County teenager's Christmas wish has come true. He really wanted cards for the holidays. Stephen Cunningham has had eight open heart surgery since he was diagnosed with heart problems. And thanks to a newspaper ad and social media posts, the 16 year old was spent sent more than 500 cards. It's overwhelming. Some came from around the world. This one's my favorite one. It has the beautiful music. And plus, I love to do ice skating. A lot of reading to do, and I'm sure he's not mad about it. The mailman <laughs> says Stephen's health problems didn't keep him from waiting at the mailbox every day. That's little things like that, you know? Cards. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I'm still waiting for my letter back from Santa. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, well, hopefully you'll get it. Did you get the cold from Santa? I got the cold. I felt oh, it. Oh, man. Uh, look at the nine day forecast. I'm going to get some coal in my mailbox here pretty soon if I don't provide some snow for the kids. Now that Marty, Marty showed a shot out there in Guyman, for us, dry conditions. It's going to be chilly over the next nine days, but really don't see any chance of snow other than maybe a flake or two out to the west on Saturday. But that's looking pretty dry, folks. It looks like uh, we're going to be drying out as we head towards 2019. Windy and cold this afternoon. Yeah, New Year, New You. We'll be back here at 4.